we can go ahead and move on to our final speaker of the session. And that is Jonathan Wilson, who's actually director of security at Winston-Salem for Scythe County Schools. Um, he first began his career in 1992 as a North Carolina parole officer in Forsyth County, was promoted to high risk officer in 96, intensive officer in 98, judicial chief in 2006, and field chief in 2007. And in 2014, he was appointed as judicial district manager and managed operations in Forsyth County before taking over in Davidson, Davie, Alexander, and Iredell counties. So after serving nearly 24 years with the State Department of Public Safety, um, he joined Winston-Salem for Scythe County Schools this past April 2016 as the district's first director of security. So he has worked as a partner and liaison between the courts, law enforcement, and many other agencies in Forsyth County and the surrounding area. And in addition to numerous other accomplishments throughout the course of his career, he has developed and implemented comprehensive security and critical incident response plans for the Winston-Salem Forsyth County School District, which is the fourth largest school district in the state. So today he's going to present on interagency emergency mapping and preparedness and pre-planning for critical school incidents. So if you'd ask me a year ago where I'd be, it would be, this would be the last place you'd expect to see me. Because I didn't know anything about GIS when I started working for the school system. And, and Hope, I, I met Hope last, yesterday at an uh, emergency management meeting in Forsyth County, and I was told I was rude. So if I was rude, I apologize. <laughs> I was late. I had a, a budget meeting prior to that, and then I tried to get it postponed, but Hope would not be put off. We had to do it. All right, so like was told, like you said, I, I started my career working with people, not with not with information. And um, I'm gonna get this thing started here. What am I not looking at? So I came on with the school system in, in, in April, and when I came on, I kept hearing about this mapping project and what it was about. Um, like I said, I didn't know anything about GIS, but kind of jumped right in, and Mr. Dorman here has is, is kind of stole a lot of thunder because EEM's come a long ways with what, with what they're doing. Winston Forsyth County School System is the fourth largest in the state of North Carolina, uh, the 81st largest in the country. Uh, and you think with a school system that big with 57,000 students and nearly 9,000 employees that they would have a, a security plan. But when I came on board, there really was no security plan at, at all to speak of. Some of the problems was that we have 11 municipalities, and that's probably not different from Wake County. Wake County, how many different towns are in Wake County? 11 or 12. So the problem when you have that many different jurisdictions is that everybody has their own little piece of the pie and they don't want to share information. Uh, and then we had four law enforcement agencies within Forsyth County as well. So we had a lot of... Um, you do with an emergency. So if I had an active shooter in the school or I had something going on, I don't, I don't have time to look at this. I don't have time to go back and say, well, where, where do I go and find out which page it is because this is very outdated. Even within this, each school had their own binders as well so that they had their own procedures to follow. They weren't as big as this, luckily, but each principal did their own thing. Had policies to address what happens if we have a fire. But again, each principal had their own idea. So we knew they were going to evacuate the school for a fire, but we thought maybe they're going outside to the, to the playground, or maybe they're going outside to the football stadium if there's a football stadium. Well, some principals had an agreement with the church down the street. We didn't know that. We have an alert system. Uh, yesterday we had a, I don't know if it was when I had your meeting or not, but we were all sitting around a meeting and everybody's phone starts buzzing. So we notify probably 300 to 400 people anytime there's an incident going on at a school as far as a lockdown, evacuation, things like that. 
but that it was not up to date. We didn't keep it up to date. We're now doing that. And then even when that alert went off, we didn't have any consistent idea or a plan as to how to react when, when we got that alert. So basically we had, anybody watch Game of Thrones? So we basically had 81 kingdoms trying to do their own thing, and the school system's trying to kind of get a grasp of it as well. And then you have the state system, people who's going to come help us, they don't know what's going on. This little view of, this was created by Matt Forsyth. Matt Forsyth has been fantastic, wonderful with us as far as the information that they provided and the things that they've done. But it's a little, uh, this is where you can see where our schools are located and the different boundaries of the municipalities. This is just from Google Earth, and the blue, the blue um, pins are where our school system administrative sites are. Those may be, they could be bus lots all the way up to the central office where the superintendent is, state bus garage, maintenance facilities, things like that. So when we started this plan, and just keep in mind, this plan started back in 2013, and I wasn't there when that happened. Uh, but this group kind of came together with Matt Forsyth. Uh, the top three are the ones who really kind of dro drove this home, but then our law enforcement agencies within the county, fire department, emergency management, how we patrol, played some role early on, not so much at the end, um, because they're more concerned about, honestly, about streets and how to control the area and, and weren't so involved in what we did on campus. But so these were our partners. I'm going to skip this next slide because this next slide talks about how Map for Scythe and Emergency Management are now partnering with some of these schools. And I think Mr. Dorman said a few minutes ago that Winston State is going to be a pilot for you. Is that right? So this is a little bit about the workflow. Emergency Management, for Scythe Emergency Management kind of oversaw the whole project to kind of get, get us together. And so I'll just talk about the public side. Um, so we, we decided what we wanted to capture, how, how we kind of wanted to look, and then uh, we would come back to the schools after, after Matt Forsyth gave us a draft map, would give us the draft map. I would go to the schools, talk to the SRO, talk to the uh, administrators, draw all over this map, take it back to Matt Forsyth, and then Matt Forsyth would then give it back to us for approval. And we'll talk about the approval process in a few minutes because it wasn't just by the school system or, or EM. Just keep in mind, this started in 2013. In 2013, we had a school shooting. And one of our schools, luckily, uh, one of the schools that we had a draft map for was Carver High School. And that's where this happened. A student comes into the school. He had a beef with another student uh, that was younger. Uh, it had been ongoing for a while, but he comes in with a gun, 38, shoots his uh, fellow student. And then the school goes, obviously, into a lockdown. Sixty-some police officers show up from all jurisdictions. This is what happened to Carver School Road. At some point, somebody pulls out the paper copy of the draft map and starts dictating where people should go. The problem was it was after the fact. Emergency responders didn't have it in their hand at the time. So luckily, we were on the right page. We are in the, heading in the right direction, but we weren't there yet. The good thing about it was that we were able to see some holes in their plans that we had already started and come back and, and fix those. <clears throat> so the purposes of our pre-staging maps, is number one, so that we can attempt to increase, I'll say attempt, to increase awareness um, for first responders to coordinate our efforts in case there was a crisis. Again, people still have their, agencies still have their own jurisdictions and they still have their own ideas as to who should be running the show, but... This gets us headed in the right direction. It's also an attempt to help principals and other school officials to begin to understand what their responsibilities are. So I heard, listen to Dr. Emery talk a few weeks back, and she said that a, a school administrator, and I could have this wrong, makes 15, I, mean, I want to get this right, makes 1,500 decisions a day regarding education needs. But if they're making 1,500 decisions a day based on what you're going to, if, if a kid's going to get disciplined for spitting his gum in the hall, and then you've got one that's pulled the fire alarm and all these things, how many decisions do they have to make in a crisis? So the idea here is to take some of these decisions, not away from them, 
but to make some of those decisions prior to an event happening so that they can just respond quickly. It's also an attempt to provide law enforcement and entry teams with better maps of interior, exterior, and the ter surrounding terrain. We know every school, just in Forsyth County, we've got schools that are way out in the country, and you'd think that you was in Amish country, the way it looks, with farms around. And then you've got some that are in the inner city that there's it's just broken glass and, 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 and things are in disrepair. And then you got really nice schools in the upper echelon of Forsyth County that everything is pristine but regardless the area around the school we need to know what it looks like because if we have to flee and go hide we need to know what's around us so we don't go into an area and get pinned in or we're going to walk into a creek or into a pond so this gives a better idea as to what's surrounding. Uh, creation of coordinated act, uh, response plans will mitigate liability. If Forsyth County school system just tries to make all these decisions on their own then they own it. If an emergency management group comes in and they try to just do it all without getting some input from the school system as to what the needs of that school is, then they own it. Because we have schools that have every, every child that's there is some, in some, has some disability. They need to know that. So we coordinate and talk ahead of time. And then this is the thing that is just a benefit. This cross-agency training and cooperation. When you show this map to these different groups, then they start thinking that way. They start working together, start training together, and then we know how they're going to react in an emergency. What our pre-staging maps are not. They're not set in stone. That's the one thing that I think the police department gets kind of upset about is to say, you know, you're making these decisions for us. What if we need to change it? Well, we can still change it. They're not set in stone. This is a plan. The Panthers go, come out every week with a football plan, right? And then if something changes, they're going, to change the, they're going to change the plays in the midst of the game. So they're designed to be flexible. They're not meant to define or limit the incident commander in any way. So not only are we not going to say, this is where you must set your incident command up, we're going to suggest that this is the best place because we've already looked at the area. But if it needs to change, the incident commander can make that change. And so what we're calling it is the staging area versus a command post. So if we stage and then the command post needs to be elsewhere, then it'll be moved. And they won't be created without the input from everyone within the county. We meet um, when, we, when we had our session where we completed all our maps, fire, police, emergency management. Um, I, I was there. We had uh, Every agency was represented, so everybody gave their stamp of approval. I don't know what's going on on my slide with these colors, but they'll make sense shortly. Um, they're designed to be useful to principals as well as first responders. Principals don't really understand this. They're, they're doing their teaching thing. They want to keep, teach kids to read, to write, do the things they need to do just to stay out of trouble. When you tell them that they've got to do drills monthly, it's kind of an interruption in their day. So, But when you lay this out, again, they start thinking and they start working in this instant command system. They start planning that way. So the instant command system is five steps. I don't really want to get into talking about all that, but basically we've taken these uh, threat levels and given you three simple threat levels for a low threat, which may be a fire, a power outage, something like that, to a minimum, a medium level of threat, which could be a fight, a big large fight on campus. We had that recently at, at Carver High School. Oh, shoot, there's a, there's a theme here, right? The theme is there's problems at that school. But, so there's 25 kids fighting in a parking lot. Well, that's a medium threat. Could have turned into a high-level threat where we have an active shooter. We have something that's on the campus that's a danger. And if you, if you get out of that without some serious injury or death, then you've, you're lucky. So the pre-staging uh, maps show the three in the color codes, with yellow being the low level, orange being the medium, and red being the highest level. Having trouble with this. Okay. So some of these same symbols you just saw when Mr. Dolman showed his. So we were kind of in some cooperation. Again, I wasn't here, but they're in cooperation to make sure that we use the same things on our system that they were using and that their system reflect what we were already doing. Is that right? 
And again, just a, some examples of what a yellow um, threat would be. It could be a mechanical situation. Um, so I'm surprised to see how many gas leaks or, or suspected gas leaks we have in Forsyth County on a given winter. An orange level bomb threat, a gun possibly on campus, not a shooter, but a gun found. And then the uh, obviously the red would be a uh, hostage situation or something really bad. So our project steps, these are things that we have done. We introduced the project for Side County First Responders. Everybody was on board. Everybody wanted to see us go forward. Again, we started in 2013. When I came on in 2016, there were about 10 schools that were three quarters of the way done. From, all, from April till August, we did all 81 schools, completed it, and implemented them before school started on the... Uh, 2nd of August or whenever it was we started back to school. Each map was evaluated and approved by the Committee of First Responders. Like I said, we, we had, I think, three different meetings. Those were all-day meetings to look at each map to kind of analyze all the details to make sure we didn't miss anything. And I, I, I keep talking about these maps. I'm going to show you what they look like shortly. Implementation for all 86 schools. Um, once the maps were completed, they were hand-delivered to the, to the principal, hand-delivered to the SRO. We had a little discussion about how they were supposed to operate with this. Uh, we did not want it put in a drawer. I did not want it hung on the back of a door and forgotten about. If we went through the trouble to create this, we wanted to be using them. And the distribution to all first responders uh, and emergency responders in Forsyth County. The first distribution process was we, we did, we created a big booklet. I mean, it was probably this thick and, I don't know, big maps. And we gave every SRO the map of their school. We gave every SRO supervisor the maps of all the schools that they oversaw. And we have... Uh, maps in the back of, of operations, school operations staff in the, every trunk has a, a paper copy of the schools that they could probably have access to. Power could be out, no internet, so we want to make sure we have a backup. Map for Scythe granted every IT department of every first responder a password and uh, a username and password that was protected because they weren't, we don't want these to be for the public to see. If the public sees these, the kids are going to tweet it. We don't have to redo it because we don't want the bad guys to know where we're hiding kids and where law enforcement is going to stage, obviously. So the benefit that we've gotten from this is that we now have one methodology, one plan district-wide, but yet they're still customized for the school. I'm going to send Hope tomorrow our, our plan so it can be uploaded into the shrimp. So you're going to have our plans, and then Map for Scythe is going to upload all of our maps that I'm going to show you shortly into Shrimp, and then it's going to be we're going to be done, right? The, the customized for each school uh, gives us the ability to use the same terminology. We're all talking the same language now. Uh, other benefits: school officials comprehend. When you give them something to look at, they see it. That's one thing I didn't know about GIS was when you can see it and it's on one place, it makes more sense. It forces officials, uh, school officials, to think about emergencies. Again, I said that they don't really think that way. Well, when they see it, they start thinking that way. This is eye-opening to see a principal or an AP to think, I never really thought about that. I never really thought that that street or that creek was here. What would I, we were going to go that way, but now we can't. Uh, keeps us on the same page. Forces discussions, just like I was mean to Hope yesterday. It forces a discussion between all of our emergency management, and it creates these relationships and a framework that we can build the rest of our plan on. So this is where we are now. In the process of us putting this thing online, they had the ability then to create uh, a digital online format. It's interactive. So this is all GIS stuff that I don't understand. You guys, I'm sure, I'm not even going to try. But all the information is there. This is what it looks like um, right now. Ours is also going to start looking like the shrimp, because it's going, we're going to be part of that. But right now, Forsyth Map has created this page for us. It has each school. If you click on the school, this one happens to be uh, Walker Town Elementary School. Pulls up the same information that, that we talked about a few minutes ago with the principal, the school's phone number, the latitude, longitude, um, the superintendent's name, and then links to these other things. So the first link is to the school web page. You click on it, this takes you to the school web page. You click on the second one, which was... 
cameras. This is the sticky part. School lawyers don't want to give access to cameras because of FERPA. So I think law enforcement should see all these cameras because of safety. <laughs> so we have to have this discussion and somebody to stand up and say, this is why we have to have it. But we have the ability already to get that. Here's, the, here's the, our maps I've ever been talking so much about. So it's basically just a, a, a shot from the sky. We get our, our inner circle here, which is, oh, was it 1,500 square feet, I think it was, that out to a mile, uh, so that we know where we're going to utilize our space. Every street that needs to be closed off, we already know where we're going to close it off. Every fire hydrant's been identified. Every checkpoint has been identified. The fire, the, uh, the Knox box, the gas tank, this school actually has a diesel tank. Most of our schools don't have gas on site, but this one does right here. That's important to know. Uh, we've identified on this, so we have two helicopter landing zones, one here at, at the elementary school, and there's another one back at the high school. The yellow place is here. This is where law enforcement is going to stage. This is where kids are going to very first uh, evacuate in case of a fire. In case we have an active shooter, obviously the kids are locked in the school. And at the time that we move them, we're going to take them to this neighboring school back here, and they're going to stay in the gymnasium. If there's a larger event and we have a shooter on campus, we don't want law enforcement to stage here because this is in line of sight. So they're going to stage back at here at this football stadium. If there were hazardous materials nearby, this is Walker Town. There's no hazardous materials in Walker Town. Calendar, pig, things like that. But if it were somewhere else and there was a hospital nearby and you had hazardous materials, it would be it would be shown. And then this call-out box is also a secondary place that if neither one of these spots work, we all know where we're going to bust the kids. Again, it shows it's approved, and then we're going to review these yearly. The next box is going to be our pretty map here with our floor plan showing our utilities up top. You'll see where those are. And this map is going to be overlaid in the shrimp plan, and then they're also going to make nice little green spots to show our doors. The last spot is that we can click and get a Google Earth view to kind of look around the school. I'll come back to that. If you want, if you have any questions about uh, how to get in touch with me, and uh, I'll, I'll come back to that. But do we have any questions? School resource officer. Every, in Forsyth County at least, every high school and middle school has a law enforcement officer on campus. Elementary schools do not. At some point, we may have to go that route, but not yet. Any other questions? So our next steps are to upload our information to the state website. The benefit there... Uh, one of the benefits I think that we see for us is that neighboring counties, if they have to respond, we have two schools in Forsyth County that sit close to the border. One of them is a, is a large campus, Flat Rock uh, Middle and Kimmel Farm Elementary School, and it sits near Davidson County. If there were to be an incident there, the first people that are going to respond are Davidson County responders. If there's a problem in the north side of the county, Stokes County is going to be at Old Richmond before anybody else could be there. There's just no way around that. So the benefit to having this in the state system is now that when these guys are driving from Danbury or from Lexington, they're going to see, they're going to already have the information. They're going to know where to stage and how to get back. Any other questions? That's all I have. Thank you. All right, thank you. And that actually wraps up this session. So we've got some other ones to catch nearby.